Well, hello, everybody. It's time for another episode of Tea with Louise. I haven't done one for a while because I've spent the summer doing my signature Venus retrograde journey class, which actually this guest uh, was a, a partaker in. But um, I thought it's time to inter- go off track a little bit. This is not an astrology interview. This is interviewing one of my favorite people about one of my favorite things, which is intermittent fasting and health coaching, and particularly for older women, I think. Uh, Well, it is for me because I'm an older woman. I discovered intermittent Mm -hmm. fasting myself about two and a half years ago, I think. And, um, And I can honestly say it's changed my life so and then I connected with Laurie and Laurie is an intermittent fasting coach and health coach and uh, she's connected with some other wonderful intermittent fasting coaches as well and is an expert on it and knows all about it so I thought I'd get Laurie on and talk about it so welcome Laurie (laughs) thank you Louise I love 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 being here with you and I I mean, nothing makes me happier than hear a person say that, you know, eating in a pattern of time, having an eating window changed your life Mm -hmm. and thousands and thousands of people would agree when we relate to it, not as a diet program, but as something that has integrity for our physiology and has this feel so well, well, let's keep, let's figure out how to do it and keep going. (laughs) So that's, it's fun for me to talk about and to be with you. Well, tell us how you discovered intermittent fasting, first of all, and why it became such an important thing for you. Well, it reminds me of the day six and a half years ago at age 54. I'm 60 now. um, I was in my mother's kitchen in Colorado for an extended visit. And she said, let's use this time that you're home to turn the weight around. (laughs) Ouch. Oh, ouch. Daughter ears do not hear that as helpful at all. No, no. <laughs> no matter the spirit. Right? <laughs> right. So what happened before that was I have been studying nutrition as just a pleasurable avocation, you know, something to do on my own for over 20 years. I enjoyed figuring out how to fuel myself well and what foods agree with me, what foods don't. And I'd been doing that for years. And in my mid forties, I started experiencing the symptoms of perimenopause, which most of our listeners, if they're contemporaries of ours, understand what that is. That's a transition, kind of the hormonal chaos from the fertility years to the postmenopausal. And so perimenopause, but no one sent me or anyone to um, biology class for older women. So I didn't know what was happening. I just knew that I felt awful. So starting in my mid forties at age 44, I started noticing these symptoms, but I didn't put it together. And I feel like perimenopause pushed me down a dark hole. And then I couldn't wait for that to be over. I was like, oh, please let this all end. And I went into menopause early at age 49 and suddenly gained 50 pounds, like boom. So not only was it the quick weight gain, which is disorienting and upsetting, but I was aching head to toe. I had memory loss. My equilibrium was off. I I had brain fog. I just was not myself at all. So I worked on turning that around and trying to feel better for nearly five years. And so then for my mom to say, let's just turn it around. (laughs) I lost it. So I was like a wailing five-year-old in her kitchen and she listened so lovingly you know, this is the, my mother is not the villain of this story. (laughs) She's an angel. (laughs) And, um, when I was done saying, I've tried everything and you don't understand. And how can you say something so insensitive? Blah, blah, blah. She said, well, let's pray for an answer. Mm -hmm. And that was an incredible generosity of like, let's just quiet this down. And somehow, some way we will see a glimmer of hope and find an answer that we don't have right now. And that very same night I went upstairs to my room in her home and, you know, we shouldn't be on our phones Googling as we're trying to fall asleep, but I did. And I Googled, I think what I had for years, something like 
hormonal, menopausal, fat, stubborn fat, help me. Mm -hmm. And up popped intermittent fasting. Now I was familiar with long-term therapeutic fasting, like even a hundred years ago, Upton Sinclair wrote a book called the fasting cure. So this is nothing new, but so I knew you could fast for like, if you can imagine 21 days or something and cure whatever ailment you had, but I didn't know it could be a pattern of time in your daily life that would keep you healthy and have you feel well. So I stayed up all night watching videos and reading things. And the next morning I said to her, well, I think I found something that sounds interesting and doable. It makes sense to me. And, and she asked, and she said it made sense to her too. And how could she support me? Mm -hmm. So I started that very same day. I decided that very same day that, you know, I don't mind black coffee. And I thought I'll just, and I'm never hungry in the morning. It's just been how I've always been. Breakfast doesn't really appeal to me. I always felt like I was forcing it down. Like you're supposed to eat breakfast. And, uh, so I just aimed for noon and, um, that's how it started. And I was there in her beautiful, supportive environment to begin this experiment. And I've never missed a day in six and a half years. I'm, I'm in awe of not missing a day because I have missed days <laughs> when I, here's how I do it. Yeah. I just say, Every day, when's my eating window today? Now, most days it's my favorite one, right? It's the one that works for my life and makes me feel well. But when schedules change and travel and hardships and, you know, getting sick and, uh, you know, all the things life is lifing. The question to ask is when's my eating window today? And then you make it work for yourself. So certainly there have been days where I always fasted 12 hours. That's the minimum for me. I will always figure out how to do that. And then if there's some festive weekend or travel, then I adjust and haven't an, always have an eating window. So I liken it to sleep. It's not optional. I mean, very, most of us are sleep deprived, but rarely, you know, maybe back in college, you pulled an all nighter, but rarely would you say, yeah, I'm not sure if this sleep is working for me. I think I might skip it for a while. No. <laughs> so this yeah, I like I like the way you explain that then because um because I've I'm I'm kind of a very disciplined person. So my eating window usually is I do 24. I only eat in four hours. And yeah. and so I feel bad about myself when I go and have a bigger window. So I'm gonna relax about that a little bit, I think, because <laughs> my big mission on life is now evolved to how can I support you and the world? How can everybody, how can you relate to yourself as a person who takes really good care of yourself, no matter what's happening in life? Yeah. And so having an eating window and fasting clean would be part of that. So how can I be a person who has an eating window every day? And so then part of that, which is really my big mission is to eradicate any whiff of diet mindset, diet mentality, diet culture, which would have us feel bad about ourselves mm -hmm. for making a choice that serves us well. Okay. So you didn't get abducted by aliens. Nobody did anything. You were just like, I'm traveling. I'm going to shift my eating window. And then the world would have us feel badly about that and have to, as I call it, um, the punishment model, everything's inside of good and bad. And I fell off and I was bad last weekend. So now I have to try really hard to be good. And this horrible pendulum swing of trying to be good and feeling awful. No, it's I'm over it. So you can be too. <laughs> so this is why I like Laurie, because <laughs> I was telling, I was telling Laurie before we hit record that um, I, um, I'm part of a, a gym that encourages this 30 day metabolic re reset, they call it. And, Love it. And okay. the, 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 it's great. But their book has super villain foods and super no villain food. Oh. And I just can't even go there. I'm like, no, I, I don't even want to try that. Thank you very much. I'll stick with my intermittent fasting because the thing I love about intermittent fasting is really you can pretty much eat anything but you know I most I think people I think if if like us you're interested in intermittent fasting you're probably also interested in eating fairly healthily so you're not going to uh, have an eating window of say six hours where you eat all 
ready meals processed. Your, yeah, your body won't take that, won't stand that for very long. So this amazing phenomenon kicks in when you're a consistent daily clean faster and keep an eating window. And I always say there's two parts to every day, the clean fasting hours and the eating window. And you get to say when it is. Yeah. So once you're consistent with that and you go through the adjustment phase, which is really about the first month, and I'm happy to share, of course, I never want to end a, an interview without telling everybody how to start, but um, your body will start to inform you of the nutrients, the food slash nutrients it needs and wants, and the food slash nutrient or lack of nutrients it's not in, wanting anymore. And your body will start communicating that to you by feeling well and not feeling well. And so the desire to feel well and prioritizing feel well. It's like, wow, I feel so well while I'm fasting. That happens very quickly for people. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, this eating window, I have a problem with. Oh, interesting. Let's take a look at that. What are the foods you love that love you back? Mm -hmm. And what are the foods that make you feel poorly and that you eat when you're rushed and exhausted, like a bowl of popcorn and call it dinner? And that is not the nutritious food that your body deserves. So food is secondary, but we get that. Uh, fasting pattern and eating window established so people feel really well and then we can start dealing with the food and I can attest to feeling really well really fast you know I got I, I did lose 40 pounds not you know it took a I'd say overall it took about mm, 10 months to use lose the That's great. yeah it took me 15 months to lose 51 pounds so it's steady and some weeks it's a bunch and then a long time it's like nothing for a while <laughs> part of that was it or I also felt like I had more energy um okay. then I started doing daily walks more and you know just doing more active things so that helps you lose weight as well but I do want to mention I do want you to clarify one thing because people who haven't read about I've read you know some the the fasting books and things now, clean fasting. What do you mean by yes. this? Now, we human beings love to cut corners and figure out what we can get away with, mm -hmm. right? So it's just like, I want to do this, but I want it to be a, a, as easy and painless as possible. Of course, the idea of fasting, people are like, oh, it sounds hard and scary. So the opposite is actually true. People, as you said, and I experienced and, you know, everybody I coach experience, the biggest surprise is how well you feel very quickly. And so we would think that whatever I can sneak into my coffee or my water or whatever, that'll feel like I'm uh, enjoying that taste and I'm, I'm treating myself while I'm suffering, while I'm fasting. And the clean fast is real, actual fasting, plain, unflavored water of any sparkliness or temperature. Like you're drinking a cup of hot water. I'm drinking a cup of cold sparkling water, which I like to put in a fancy glass. I like my uh, good morning. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Even, Cheers, Louise. Afternoon now, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so plain, unflavored mm -hmm. water with nothing in it. Even LaCroix, you know, pomegranate essence, people like that has no calories. It has food flavor. Okay, so plain, unflavored water plain unflavored black coffee, plain unflavored bitter black or green tea. And then the final two pieces are plain unflavored minerals like magnesium and sodium and your medication as prescribed. So we think that it's going to make fasting easier to have those fun flavors. And maybe, you know, if you follow bulletproof coffee, some fat in your coffee, or some people even fast with bone broth or pickle juice. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's people are like, I have to have lemon in my water. I hate plain water. Okay. So here's why the clean flat fast, plain unflavored one shockingly, it makes fasting easier. Mm -hmm. It's easier to introduce no nutrients or flavors while you're fasting, because when you have a little lemon, a piece of sweet gum, um, you know, anything that, that you can find anything on the internet that gives you permission, right? But Stevia, any Stevia drops in my coffee, that was mine. <laughs> yeah. Any sweetness, mm -hmm. any nutrients. So people will say, well, you said bitter tea. What about dandelion tea? Well, that is super bitter for sure, but it's chocked full of nutrients. 
So we don't want flavors, sweetness, food flavors, sweetness, or nutrients while we're fasting, plain unflavored water. It's the, really the way to go. And then black coffee in the morning to wake yourself up and then just have one and keep fasting clean. It makes fasting easier. And we then get all the healing repair of the fasting hours. The body is in full rest mode, hormonally, digestion, every cell is getting cleaned out and refurbished. That's phenomenon called autophagy. They say autophagy in the UK yes. <laughs> and Canada and Australia. So autophagy, autophagy, I don't care what you call it, tomato, tomato. Um, but the clean fast makes it easier and you get all the healing benefits. You get into fat burning faster. You get everything that you say you want, ease and feeling better and getting into fat burning and maybe reversing some, some ailments and dysfunction and diseases. You get everything you want more quickly by fasting clean. And then, you know, people feel like, oh, it's a whole lot of restriction. No, then, as you said, you can eat as you please later in your eating window. And the more you do that consistently every day, your body is in the driver's seat and then steering you towards the foods it wants you to have and away from the foods it doesn't. So your body's the boss and yeah. you can hear it when you're a consistent, fast, clean, faster. So when I first started doing it, I hadn't heard of clean fasting. And so I was drinking my coffee with stevia drops in and I was having some flavored stuff and things. Um, and once I read about clean fasting and forced myself to start drinking coffee without stevia in and drinking, I buy pure liqueur. I drink the just the coffee. blue can at La Croix. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I've got this, you know, the hot water. And it did make a big difference. Um, honestly, I can attest to the difference between the clean fasting and this not clean fasting, let's say. Exactly. Well, not fasting is what we got. So really. Jim Stevens wrote a wonderful book in 2016 called right about the time that that Jason Fung's The Obesity Code came out. Two really important books to get people to normalize the idea of fasting and having an eating window. And that her book was called Delay, Don't Deny. And those were the early days when they weren't quite sure, you know, could you have a squeeze of lemon? You know? And um, what we discovered, because I quickly joined forces with her and became um, a first Sherry Bullock and I were her first two moderators in the Delay Don't Deny group. And we grew it to, it's now 450,000, but we grew it together to 350,000 members. And so when you're actively communicating with that many people every day, you're seeing, I know it's anecdotal, but you're seeing a lot of trends. And so we, Jen realized, you know, she was in charge, but that this idea of fasting clean, plain unflavored mm -hmm. was easier for people and, and people reaped the benefits. And so in her second book, which became a New York times bestseller, fast feast, repeat, the first was delay, don't deny fast feast, repeat. She has a whole chapter on the importance of the clean fast. And then there are testimonials, one of which is mine that says, okay, here's what happened, you know, to me. So that day that I started, you know, with my mom, I went out to the health food store and I bought, I spent a fortune on like five boxes of very fancy tea. Oh. And I figured out on my own, you know, all of the charcoal, blah, 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 ginger, lemongrass. I'm like, okay, this is going to help me. I figured out that when I had a cup of that tea, any one of them, mm -hmm. I was ravenously hungry after. And so I just, I didn't like that feeling. I'm like, I think the tea is causing me to feel hunger. I'm not going to have that anymore. And then you say the stevia. Now people are like, I thought it was allowed because stevia doesn't raise blood sugar. Well, what we're really talking about when we're fasting is we're talking about keeping insulin low, which is a hormone made by the pancreas and insulin regulates blood sugar and also is a fat storage hormone. So we are one of the reasons we're fasting clean and long and consistently is to lower our circulating insulin. And so when we take in any sweetness, insulin goes up. So we're first and foremost, avoiding any insulin spike and then any food flavors. Cause the body, imagine the body gets a little lemon. It goes, mm, 
lemons coming. <laughs> and, and then you're like, no, I'm fasting. And it's like, where's the lemon? Where's the rest of the food? It, it aligned, it, it aligned itself, it prepared, it got ready to receive food. And you think you're fasting. So you didn't give it food and it gets grumpy. So when people have been consistently intermittent fasting for three weeks or more, and they say they are really struggling to get to 16 hours. I suspect they're not fasting clean because the minute you start fasting clean, 16 is a breeze. You're then fat adapted. You're burning your own body fat for fuel. The other thing I want to say about putting fat in your coffee. Now, some people out there might be like, what the heck is that? That sounds terrible, but it's a movement, you know, and there are a lot of gurus who say it's great, but think of it this way. People say, oh, if I have that fat in my coffee, I have this nice sustained energy all morning until I eat lunch at one. Oh, it spikes you. And then, yeah. Well, what actually I just say, and Jen Stevens says this too, which fat would you prefer burning? The <laughs> fat in your coffee cup or the fat on your butt? <laughs> the fat on your belly. It's like, if you're going to burn fat for a nice sustained energy all morning long until you eat, I would prefer burning the fat on my body. Cause there's plenty, even though I'm at my ideal weight, I'm like 22% body fat. I'm never going to run out ever. And, um, it's always there for me ready to have me feel great every single morning. So let's burn the fat in our bodies, not in our coffee cup. It was that book, Fast, Feast, Repeat, that uh, got me into the clean fasting and made all the difference for me, to be quite mm. honest. That's when, and I, I, yes, I was doing it for weight loss at first, but uh, because I had reached a horrendous <laughs> goal that I never even want to talk about, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, and I never want to go back there again. But um, once I started clean fasting, the weight just started just slowly melting off, melting off. And I actually can go easily go 20 hours fasting now. Yeah. You know, now that think- sounds very long to many people. I'm sure there are people out there going, oh, my gosh, it's so extreme. But maybe for you, it's 17. Maybe for you, it's 21, three. Maybe so each person, um, the cornerstones of my coaching are the clean fast curiosity, mm. There's no judgment here. It's just like, okay, what did I do? And then what happened? What did I do? And then what happened? Customization. So what did I do? What happened? And what am I shifting? So we're customizing to make it work for each individual. And then the fourth cornerstone is continuing. Like this is not a short-term thing that I do and don't do. And no, it's it, a lifestyle now. It's great. So how do we keep yeah. going? And I assert that if you're doing something that has you feel so well Mm. over time, you're going to prioritize that. And, you know, it's understandable. So many people say to me, they're like, oh, intermittent fasting. I did that. I never felt better. And I'm like, what happened? (laughs) You stopped. And they're like, yeah, they either went on vacation or something hard or sad happened in their life. And they feel like they never quite got back to it. It's like, let's just get right back to it because you will feel better. Mm. talk about the other benefits we've talked about the weight loss and just about feeling more energy and things but yes um i don't at the moment because full disclosure to the whoever's watching i have i had i caught covid two weeks ago on oh. in UK when we were visiting home and i'm still recovering from that and my head is so congested so i don't feel full of energy today but usually i feel really full of energy really clear and I um, work in, you know, I'm an astrologer and a shamanic practitioner. So I guess I'm in the spiritual world, whatever you want to call it. And I felt, I feel clearer when I am doing, well, since starting the intermittent fasting, apart from <laughs> COVID recovery. <This> moment. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I just feel like my mind's clearer generally. I get more um, ideas, you know, I can have more mm-hmm. energy to do more work in the day and so on and so forth is that a common um, thing that people find it is and you know I, I love talking about our evolutionary history because human beings since the first person <laughs> throughout yeah. all time have there's been food scarcity so physiologically we evolved to thrive and be bright and sharp and have good strength and stamina in a fasted state 
when there was no food so that we could go have the strength to get food. So, you know, our ancestors probably spent every waking minute finding food and preparing food and storing food and moving food. It was like all about food because there it was fierce. I'm sure they didn't snack all day as well. So like, no, my goodness. <laughs> Nor could they use food to deal with emotional mm. distress. Mm-hmm. So loneliness, everything good and bad, emotional, but mostly um, feeling deserving and feeling resentful and feeling hurt and anger. We deal with food. We help cope, that help us cope with, with using food. And our ancestors did not have that. But the other aspect historically of fasting is prayer and fasting Mm -hmm. in all religious, spiritual meditation, even traditions, like the eating is consolidated Mm -hmm. or many days without food, depending on the religion and, you know, all the ancient texts, prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. Why would that be Mm -hmm. exactly what you just said? You said clarity, ideas, energy, creativity. There's a discernment. I always say, this is not a diet. It's a quiet because it does when you're fasting, you've got this nice, steady, sustained energy. Every once in a while, your body will tap you on the shoulder and remind you to find food because evolutionarily it's like there was no fridge right there. So go find food. Don't forget, don't forget to eat. Okay. But that just kind of comes and goes. It's an alert system. It's not an emergency. And so in that quiet of fasting clean, we feel better and we feel brighter and we're either getting communication from our body or the divine. (laughs) Like you get to attribute it to whatever, you know, however those thoughts are coming in more clearly, sharper, more steady, more attuned. Mm -hmm that's fasting and we're supposed to be doing it for to match our physiology and to heal every day and be in repair while we're fasting and if we're a person who's interested in connecting mm. with fasting, what, whatever it is it doesn't matter what you call it my mind universal love energy yeah. my universal mind unlimited mind yes we're tuned in <laughs> And, and I would say my, uh, you know, astrology consultations and my classes and my work has kind of gone to a different level. And honestly, I, I would attribute a lot of that to um, fasting as well. But do you ever do a longer fast as well, just to mix it up a little bit? I do. And so again, I don't want people to out there be like, oh, I could never do that. You don't have to, you know, I know people who've been intermittent I've, fasting forever. I've never done one yet, but I am thinking of doing one when I. What's recall. longer for you? What would feel longer? Well, I was going to start do a 48 hour one to start. I love it. Okay. So right there, I would recommend. So if you think of 48 hours as two whole days, and then it, you hit the end, when are you going to eat? So I recommend 38 or 40. Okay. So that then, so the idea of doing a longer fast, so that would be two sleeps, right? So like Sunday night, you close your eating window, you'd fast on Monday, you drink, you know, maybe one coffee and yeah. your plain water, you wake up on Tuesday. And what's the most shocking thing is you will wake up on Tuesday and you will forget that you didn't eat the day before. Yeah. You do not wake up starving. And so then, so that fasting day is called a down day, no food. Mm. And the next day is the eating day is called an up day. So on that day, following the fasting day, it's a day. It's not a window, an eating window. A eating window implies kind of a constraint. Yeah. And if you've just fasted all day long for, you know, 40 hours, let's say that next day on Tuesday, you eat as you are hungry. So you eat a little something. I usually say before you got to think before noon, because as I said, people wake up and they're like, food is the last thing on their mind. So you kind of have to remember to eat. (laughs) Well, actually that doesn't surprise me because then you eat two, two, three meals. You start out slowly, which is hard for new fasters to, you know, sit, put a little, you know, maybe something juicy, like an orange or watermelon, you know, or try test out an egg or maybe 
you know, a little bite of something that sounds good to you. <laughs> Not a, yes, you have a little, and then you see how that goes. And then you can have a nice meal. And then later you'll have another meal. And then you just, then on the next day, you just go back to your eating window. And it takes, here's what it takes to be able to do that. One, to know that it's good for you. And two, to be aligned and excited about all that healing that will ha happen and that commitment that you're making. And then to know that hunger comes in waves. Mm -hmm. And then to know that you are experienced enough faster that you know the difference between a hunger alert, your body going, don't forget to eat sometime, yeah. and real actual hunger. So I very much encourage people if they're like oh I didn't make it it's like so then we distinguish what had you decide to eat and oftentimes the body is like yeah today's not the day today's not the day today we're eating and that's, and I, that's why I know I've got to get over this before I can even contemplate doing it because COVID has wanted food to be honest <laughs> yes a virus you know historically when you have a virus Mm -hmm. if, if your body is asking for food, you should feed it. Now in our culture, when we're sick, we just feel so sorry for ourselves. It's a big pity party that we stuff ourselves with food that is not helpful for the healing process. Cause we, you know, feel bad for ourselves for being sick. We, it's funny that we tend to in, in hard times, take worse care of ourselves, but with a virus, when your body asks for food, you should feed it for sure. And that's why people say, you know, chicken soup, matzo ball soup, you know, good old fashioned, healthy food. <laughs> so I've, I've still intermittent fasted through it for the most part. Yeah. But probably my window's been a bit longer or maybe because I usually have kind of a small meal, then a, a larger meal. That's all I have in the day. I've probably had something in between as well because I want a little bit more. <laughs> so, <laughs> But I'm like a wild animal or a domesticated animal. When an animal gets sick, they stop eating. Yeah. And so if I get a cold, if I feel a sore throat coming on, or I feel a cold coming on, or even something like a twisted ankle or inflammation goes right to that part to heal, I put my body into a complete digestive rest so that all the attention in my body is dedicated towards fixing that imbalance. Yeah. So I really encourage people when you're not feeling hundred percent to use your fasting and eating window schedule as a tool for actually feeling better. You know, some people are like, oh, just show yourself some grace and eat what you want. It's like, maybe not. Maybe part of the healing is uh -huh. stepping back and resting in all the possible ways, <laughs> horizontally and digestively. <laughs> oh, so, um, oh gosh, I love talking about this. And I, Me too. <laughs> I think what else I want people to know about it because uh, to my, I just think people, um, I, I actually shared on my Facebook that I had lost 40 pounds through intermittent fasting and I actually got attacked completely. Well, let's talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to. This person said I should not be using my position to tell people to how to live and what to do which I wasn't doing anyway because I'm sharing yeah I'm sharing what had worked for me you know uh but uh you know why shouldn't we share if it's worked I think it works for most people to be quite honest intermittent fasting doesn't it and why would somebody attack you because they think they know better so you've probably heard all the attacks against intermittent, intermittent fasting so I have and um so when so it's a, it's a tangled knot of you and I are probably a hundred percent aligned with the body positivity mindset and even movement, right? Like what it's whatever a person's body looks like is awesome. Like I have no opinion about the shape size, you know, like not nothing at all. I do care about people feeling well. Yeah. So if someone is aching and hurting and there are aspects of their body that aren't working right, we want, I want people to feel better, yeah. but my desire to have people feel better has nothing to do with the shape of their body. So all bodies thumbs up. Yep. Exactly. Now, Part of that, I don't want to say that movement, part of that mentality is 
nobody should be working on themselves then. <laughs> it's like, wait, okay. So remember when I gained 50 pounds, it wasn't just the 50 pounds. It was the brain fog and my equilibrium off and every part of me ached. Joints and yeah, all of that. The, every single joint, every muscle that I pushed on hurt. So I wanted that to stop. And, um, I'd had plantar fasciitis for 10 years, which went away within three to four months of my intermittent fasting. I had a huge cyst on my spine that went away within a year. Yeah. So, um, the criticism of people who are wanting to feel better is, uh, it's just off kilter. And so using your platform, your voice to say, your commitment to yourself and your commitment to people and wanting to share something that is as old as human physiology is, which is like pause from eating, distinguish actual hunger, eat nutritious food within a time frame because we're surrounded by food 24 seven. We're emotional eaters. So we've got to do something to consolidate our eating like our ancestors did so that we feel better and, and stop with all these metabolic diseases. So Yay for you for saying there's this schedule of eating that I tried and yeah. I feel a lot better. And I want people to know that that is not shaming anyone. That's not coming from diet world. And so exactly. good for you. And maybe I emphasized the 40 pounds, but I felt, no, but, that's a, but losing the weight felt good on you. Well, it did because it got rid of my plantar fasciitis. My knees don't ache like they used right. to. So one of the we'll immediate aspects, <laughs> you know? I'm sorry, I interrupted you. What did oh, you say? I walk four miles a day and, and, you know, some people go, wow, that's a long way. And I'm going, well, it's just an hour and 10 minutes. It's, you know, it's that's not right. that when you feel good. <laughs> so we expect this was, this was where I was in that moment that I was in my mother's kitchen. And she said, let's use this time to turn the weight around. I was about as despondent and hopeless as I'd ever been in my life. Like I was right at this threshold of feeling like, oh, I have to succumb to the idea that I'm going to feel worse forever. Yeah. And Oh man, you've seen my chart. That's not my, <laughs> that's not who I am. <laughs> no, it's not who she is. <laughs> right? Like, I, and so this idea that, oh, you know, and doctors now are just like, what do you expect? You're 52 years old. You're going to feel worse forever. It's like, no, that's not true. It doesn't have to be that way. And so my philosophy is that if we start fasting clean and discover our, our sweet spot eating window that feels good to us, then that pattern, that experience of feeling so well, having good energy, having the aches and pains go away, mm -hmm. helps every aspect of our life get better. So you said, I'm better at my job now. Like, why is that? It's like, you're clearer. You're probably a better listener. You're just all your discernment is going towards being together with whoever you're working with, as opposed to the huge energy drain of digestion and you get to eat delicious food later. So if you're an intermittent faster and you fast clean and keep an eating window, it makes your food choices easier. It makes your sleep better. It makes your meditation clear. You might become a more productive patient person. Your workouts are stronger and, yeah. and you can have more stamina. So it just, it, I would never say keeping an eating window cures all diseases, yeah. but the list of things that I've seen that people's bodies have turned around because they fast clean and keep an eating window is astonishing from psoriasis to, you know, ev truly everything nodules on the thyroid, fatty liver disease, type two diabetes, migraine. I've know. always, I've always been pretty healthy in terms of you know diagnoses from the doctor and things but I do have to say I went for my physical last time and they were quite amazed because I'm turning 64 in December and there's just nothing <laughs> all my bloods were good everything's oh. good how many people here in this in our world the western world can say that because I have no aches and pains and I'm on no medication and I'm 60 years old and five, six years ago, 
I was hurting head to toe. Yeah. And um, the, the one of the first things that keeping an eating window addresses in our physical body is lowering inflammation and normalizing our blood pressure. Yeah. So, you know, those, those two things are, and, and lowering circulating insulin. People don't realize a really good book I recommend is called why we get sick by Ben Bickman. He's in Utah where you are and, um, why we get sick by Ben Bickman and his, uh, research proves that high circulating insulin and yeah. high inflammation are the underlying causes. See, the disease is not type two diabetes that your blood sugar is too high and unregulated. It's the dysfunction of the insulin that your insulin, highly insulin resistant. And so the relationship between insulin and sugar isn't working. So it's what's underneath that, what's underneath that, that our modern, modern medicine uh, world doesn't address. So we get to, so, you know, the way to address high circulating insulin and inflammation is off a fasting schedule. <laughs> so, you know, I, I would suggest anybody at least give it a try. And Unless you're pregnant or breastfeeding, oh, everybody yeah. else over 20, you know, go for it. <laughs> but don't, don't go straight to, I, yeah, I like doing 24 most days, um, 20 hours fasting, four hours eating, because I can, drink water my black coffee in the morning then my hot water I can drink that all day until I eat about 2 2 to 2 30 and then I have my dinner quite early but that's quite severe for some people so <laughs> it just really yeah, suits. but you discovered with your work day yeah. and with your walking and then you sit for work and you know how you feel when you're working and that it works better for you to finish your work day and then open your eating window and people can. So let me, why don't I just share how to start? So it's not like a diet where people have to muster up, you know, you don't have to clean out the fridge. You don't have to do anything. You just look at the clock right now. Yeah. Everybody out there in listening land, look at the clock right now and decide when you're going to eat your last meal today. And when seems like a good time to close your eating window. And people are like, well, what's the best time? I don't know. I'm not in your life. You decide. So like, and give yourself a little wiggle room. It's like, well, we normally eat dinner between 6.30 and 7. And I'm like, okay, well, could you close it 7.30, maybe 8 and have kind of 8 be a hard stop for you? People are like, yeah, sure. You know, whatever it is, it could be three o'clock in the afternoon or midnight. I don't care. And so you look at the clock and you decide today when you're closing your eating window. And then you drink plain water and go to bed and wake up tomorrow and drink plain water and have a black coffee. If you like coffee, you don't have to have coffee or if you like tea, and then you go as long as you can. If you can add 12 hours to the time that you closed the eating window today to tomorrow, 12 hours, you did it. You, you fasted clean, you, and then you open your eating window by eating normally. Many people open their eating window by having their candy coffee, you know, their coffee, the way they like it. And then over the first 10 days, approximately, you gradually extend that clean fast and gradually shrink that eating window. A lot of people aim for 10, like 10 to six or noon to eight, getting to a 16, eight schedule within the first week or two is a really great steady way to start. And then you start experimenting with the timing that works for your family, your life, your workout, your, you know, everything I decided very quickly. So I started with that 16, eight, I aimed for noon. I just, cause I was also with my mom and we ate early. It's like, wait, it, I don't need an eight hour eating window. I ate two meals in what turned out to be about a six hour eating window. And I did that for about a month and a half. And then someone challenged me to a 20 hour fast. Now the difference between 18 and 20, that two hours was just like a life. I was just like, wow, that's long. <laughs> you know. So I did it. I did that. And I still do that with my clients right within the first few weeks. We stretch. I call it a bold stretch. It's not a push. It's oh. like if you go to yoga, you don't want to push yourself. You want a nice stretch. So a nice, bold stretch. It takes some determination, aim for 20, you know, maybe be maybe in the first three, four, five, six weeks, it's up to you. And if you can do 20 one time, that pendulum kind of swings back and then you get a clear sense of 
what your sweet spot is. So you can go from 16, eight to doing that one 20 hour fast. And then it's kind of like, you know, 18 kind of works for me or 19, five or whatever, whatever it is works for you is, and then people need to, once they're settling in and they become fat adapted, which means your body burns your own body fat for energy that takes about three to four weeks. Um, then you can start troubleshooting and you look at your goals and you look at what you're eating and the timing of your eating, and you just kind of keep tweaking it. And yeah. that's how you continue. That's how you start. And that's how you continue. But I'm not the food police. I am the clean fasting police. So fast, clean. Nobody can talk to me unless it's the first thing I'm going to ask. It's like... <laughs> well, so I, I, please, I fast clean. <laughs> yeah, right. I will say one other benefit I've found talking. I talked about the clarity and everything like that is time, you know, oh. spending less because I, I fasting for 20 hours most days. But a lot of that, of course, is sleep eight hours of sleep so but the the hours I'm awake when I'm fasting I'm not distracted by going off to find something to eat and make food and do something and things like that so I get piled through loads of work and then I go (sighs) relax and eat (laughs) saving time and saving money very real and tangible benefits. And there's this idea too, Louise, of decision fatigue. Like when food, when, when you're a constant eater, nibbler, grazer, some people like never eat a meal, but they're constantly drinking flavored drinks and nibbling and grazing, but we're not a grazing atom animal. So we are inherently not satisfied by having a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of this, a bit of that. We need to satiate ourselves with a variety of nutrients at one time and then wait and have the next one. Um, I lost track of what I was saying, but I was saying well, we were about, talking about, you know, the, the decision fatigue, you know, yes. What am I doing when you're now? What constantly oh. thinking about getting the next food, getting the next food, getting the next food. And once you become fat adapted and you're burning your own body fat for energy, whoosh, that just goes away and then you can just get your work done (laughs) it's quite amazing you know I just go and pour another thing of water that's all I need no decisions if I and then you can very easily be like "Mm, okay when am I opening my eating window today you know it could be three two three four whatever if you have a shorter eating window like you do and then you can kind of think about what yummy food you're going to eat later but it doesn't overcome you it doesn't it's just like oh yum that's going to be delicious I can't wait to have that this evening (laughs) (laughs) so you have a holiday program right I do I am celebrating right now this weekend my fifth year of my fast forward wellness coaching and the way it started was I was at a wedding in Philadelphia in 2018 and I got cornered by a whole gang of people who were like, how did you do what you did? You have to teach us. And I'm like trying to give them instructions. And they're like, no, get, you have to be our coach, get lead, teach us, have a class. And I was like, oh my gosh, I resisted. I argued back. I was like, I'm not going to take your money to teach you how to stop eating. You know? <laughs> And they're like, you're so arrogant. You get all the benefits and now you won't share that, you know? So they finally convinced me and I said, well, I'll do it if we start now. And they're like, we can't go on an eating plan over the holidays. I'm like, it's not a diet. So that I got very determined to prove to them. So we filled that class with, I think, 19 people. That was my first one. I'm about to lead my sixth annual holiday program where we go from Halloween all the way through New Year's bubbly. We wrap up the program at the end of January and people can prove to themselves that they can enjoy the festive food and drink that we enjoy during the holidays and the camaraderie and the hopefully the joy. And I know the holidays are a hard time for many people, a depressing time for people. So whatever, wherever you are on the spectrum, We're going to get through the holidays together, enjoying the foods you love and keeping an eating window and having you feel confident and proud of yourself and very physically and emotionally well, and never having to use January to fix all the, you know, bad behavior in December, you know, so poor January, poor January gets dumped on. We're going to love up January. (laughs) I've intermittent fasted through two holidays now and I do do 
Christmas dinner on Christmas Day, even though we're not. But um, I could, because I feel so good on the intermittent fasting, I, I spend all day preparing my Christmas dinner and I don't get tempted by the food. Isn't that amazing? Now, other people do the opposite. So in the holiday program, we kind of decide, what are you going to do for Thanksgiving? Because Thanksgiving's the first one. People are like, oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm and so some really people are that. like, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to wake up on Thanksgiving. They're the things I love to do on Thanksgiving. I really want to taste as I'm cooking. I'm going to have a long eating window on Thanksgiving. Other people are like, no way, man. I'm going to assign some grandma or some kid to be the taster. I'm going to fast all the way through. I'm not going to gorge on all those, all that cheese and crackers. I'm going to sit down at that Thanksgiving feast and have a freaking legit feast. Yeah. So everybody does it differently. Some people want to eat all day long. Like they enjoy other people are like, Nope. And I have also enjoyed not eating at all right up until the feast. And that is a very special, I, that's what I prefer also myself. I prefer. Yeah, I'm not a big taster. You know, I know what I'm cooking. I know what I make. It's the same thing every year. So. You no, know, I make mushroom gravy and I love doing the stuffing. And my mom was famous. My mom's name was D. And so she would make these, she would call it D's peas. <laughs> so we'd make, I would get to make D's peas. Oh. Yeah, I know how to make it. I don't need to taste it. <laughs> so I'm my my, my uh, signature one is um Adelia Smith, do you have you heard of her? Oh, I don't know who she is. She's a British uh, chef. Sounds like a lovely and, English uh, name. She, uh, she's got cookbooks and she, uh, her roast potatoes with rosemary. Oh. So. Ooh, yeah, all those things are so good. I love them all. Some people, I was, uh, you know, being interviewed for a podcast once, and the guy was like, "Wait a second, I thought like intermittent fasters didn't like to eat." I'm like, "Oh, contraire." <laughs> <laughs> we can vary our quality, our requirement for, as we say, window worthy foods. We've got this precious eating window. We're not going to eat sub, you know, quality, mediocre food. We're going to eat window worthy, delicious food that makes us feel amazing. That where my mouth is watering right now, I can't, you know, I'm going out. Actually, I'm taking, a tra- I'm in New York right now. I live in Portland, Oregon, but taking the train to Brooklyn and I'm going to one of my favorite restaurants with some of my favorite people. And actually all day long, I've been thinking, oh my gosh, I can't wait for that guacamole and my yummy verde enchiladas and I don't need to eat till I get there. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> oh, we're having these amazing Irish uh, bangers, sausages that Trader Joe's do every year for dinner. To- uh, they <laughs> have some fun seasonal things, don't they? Yeah, Trader Joe's. They're, they're, they're their St. Patrick's Day ones. I buy them off and freeze them so I can have one back in a month. That's incredible, Louise. Wow. So, yeah, so, yeah we love food. I love food. Well, you and I are so aligned. We are clearly enthusiastic about, you know, we're women in our 60s, but we, I guess you started when you were in your 60s. I started in my early 50s intermittent fasting and to be able to uh, feel so well and enjoy our food and see such solid uh, and enjoy life, but our, all our health numbers, it's really exhilarating to share it with people. So I am going to put the link in the description below, but it's fastforwardwellness.com for Laurie's website. If you want to check out her holiday group program, if you want to kind of get through the holidays in healthy style and enjoy it and not feel, oh, that horrible January kind of like, oh, I drank too much. I've eaten too much. <laughs> and I want to extend a discount. So if they take your, put your name, Louise, in all caps, Louise, 100, 100, mm-hmm. I'll be happy to give them a hundred dollar discount on the holiday program. So, so the full fee is 497. And so it'll be 397 for three full months of support. And oh. um, it's a very happy, positive, wonderful group. It's all live. I'm not like sending you recorded material like we're together <laughs> well thank you for that so i will take advantage of that everybody if you're interested in this well thanks laurie thanks for coming on um you know i feel i've learned extra bits even though i'm a committed intermittent faster already and uh, i'm going to start preparing for my 40 hour i'll go for first i'm here for you, <laughs> I'm here for you. yes I just feel like I need a reset. It feels really good, especially the first time you do it. And um, it's, it's amazing waking up on that second morning, like, oh my goodness, I feel so well. Wow. I did it.
Well, thanks for joining us. And thank you. I hope you've all enjoyed this switch from my usual. So speak to you next time. <laughs>